There's a big fight going on. Uh, at tell, tell. So, uh, John Dramani Mahama is, uh, is, is heating up his campaign. Uh, the former president. He's just put uh, five questions out asking the vice president to do something. Have a look at the video. Ebusia mame mwa kwa ba enfamla GH plus so se na no first time wa share channel ya but mo dey subscribe button no e wo umi aso ye ntuhu na bo mo dey na video se won but mo dey na share bi na e share bi na do nya bi so hwe no no so enya bi hwe He posed 170 questions to my vice president Emisata He should go and answer the, the the 170 questions himself Indeed he shouldn't answer 170 questions He should answer only 3 questions Three, why is the exchange rate 17 cities to the dollar? Question one, exam, he should come and write. Ezu, why has Ghana's debt risen from 120 billion to 767 billion in eight years? Question two, he should come and answer. Question three, why is inflation where it is, why did it rise to 54% uh, under your administration for eight years? And then let me add two more. Question four. Why did you borrow 42 billion CDs from the Bank of Ghana? Why did you borrow 42 billion CDs from the Bank of Ghana? He should come and answer those questions. We don't need 170 questions. 170, if he wants, he can answer them himself. But Ghanaians are asking him four questions. He should come and answer those four questions and explain to Ghanaians why we are where we are. The last question is, why has he run away from the economy to digitalization? He used to do big, 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 big about economy. Today, he can't mention economy. It's not in his vocabulary. Anytime he opens his mouth, digitalization. Come and talk about the economy. That's question five. Five questions. Tell him. You should come and answer them. Mama says that uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Obama here must answer those questions. I, I mean, I can answer some of those questions. Why is inflation uh, 54% in 2020? Because uh, COVID and Ukraine and uh, Russia. COVID and Russia. Should I say louder? COVID and Russia, Ukraine war. Okay. All right. <laughs> but Dr. Baumia has an answer for him. From what I'm hearing from Baumia people tonight, Baumia's campaign tonight is telling me that, tell John Mahama, I, I called and I said, Charlie, I ask questions for you. He says, go and answer. Say, tell him that if you want answers, debate me. That's strong, isn't it? The campaign is charging. He says, answer these five questions. Dr. Baumia says, come to the debate. You are saying you won't come to debate. Come to stand in front of me at debate and say, hi, hey, I'm here. You are here. You, Dr. Baumia, why is the inflation... Yeah, 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 that's simple. Because now Dr. Bamiya is going to answer on a rally platform. Then John Mahama will also uh, ask another question on another platform. Then Dr. Bamiya will go to Bimbila and answer the question. Then Dr. Bamiya, uh, the Mahama will be in a Jusu and ask another question. Then Dr. Bamiya will go to Kaswa and answer that question. Then John Mahama will be in Brekum and ask another question. Then John Mahama, Dr. Bamiya will go to Kwetoy and stand there in Adudome and answer that question. Then John Mahama will go to uh, Enchi in the western region and ask another question. We don't want that. We want the two of them, one standing here, one standing here. IA debate live on television. 25 million Ghanaian voters are watching. John Mahama has a question. Question one, you about me. Then this, that's what we want. Viewers, support me. Send a text to the video. Say yes, yes, yes. Presidential debate. So you have five questions to ask the vice president. Vice president, show up at the debate. Because you can't say you are running away from the debate and you're asking the man questions from far away. You are moving away from the debate stage. Every day you are shifting away and asking questions from far away. No, show up at the debate. Come to the debate. Let's deal with it. Let's see an example of how debate works. If, if we are forgotten, this is how debate works. Have a look. Solid evidence that the people of this country have a very clear choice to make on December the 7th. From the NDC, we've heard again many of the same familiar campaign promises which we heard four years ago. And they've now packaged them as fantasy and are trying to sell it to us as reality. Fantasy. Four years ago, they said they would bring unemployment down to the barest minimum. 
to petrol and LPG at much higher price. I lead a team of committed, dedicated men and women who are ready to take on the challenge of transforming the economy. Now we go to NDC. Thank you very Three much. Including comments, please. Thank you very much. Um, I want to first and foremost uh, thank the IEA for this opportunity it's given to Ghanaians to get to know who the persons who want to lead this country for an economy that was in deficit. Indeed, the MPP were very relieved seeing three years had, it has laid the kind of that it takes to open the opportunities of this country to all Ghanaians. Actually, actually now we can all applaud the candidates. Let's give our candidates a round of applause. So that's debate, viewers. That's debate. You know, Akufado speaks, John Mahama speaks. So it looks like John Mahama has brought the debate on and we are excited because we all want to see a debate, don't we? President Mahama says, I have five questions for you. He says, come to the debate. Come, show up at the debate. Me and you, all Ghana is watching. Let's deal with it, isn't it? <laughs> all right, let's take it. We have another story. Yeah. Uh, procurement authority man. Charlie, the guy, the guy, the guy has got swag, man. The guy has got swag. He has written a letter to Alban Sumano Kingsford Bagbin. He says, Mr. Speaker, what are you saying? You want me to approve for you to pay a lawyer from Parliament's money, 300,000 Ghana cities, for representing you at Supreme Court. I will not do it. Go to the Attorney General. Now, if you think I'm exaggerating, let's get onto the touch screen and see what has just happened. So, what, you see, the, the, the letter is, um, uh, uh, it's a December 2022 letter. You know, it's just December 2022 letter. And it's talking about the speaker wanted, um, the speaker wanted uh, uh, to ask for uh, money to be given to a lawyer. And I think people are putting this up now because it appears that the speaker is preparing to go to the Supreme Court, as we know. Uh, speaker Bagbin has responded that the service of the of the Supreme Court processes on him was illegitimate and therefore he's returned the service. And so he's preparing to get a lawyer, uh, as it were, to go to the court. So people are publishing this again. It says, request for approval to procure the services of an external solicitor to support parliament and the parliamentary services through the application of a single source method of procurement. We make reference to a uh, letter. At the first board meeting of fifth board held on thursday 8 december 2022 the board could not approve the request to use the single source procurement method to engage messiah sorry at law as an external solicitor to support parliament and the parliamentary service mm -hmm. on a retainer of 5,000 cities and a specific fee mm -hmm. to con uh, for the conduct of constitutional cases in the supreme court at a fee not exceeding 300,000 cities the board noted that since the Attorney General is the principal legal advisor to the government, the board is of the considered opinion that the parliamentary services should continue to use the services of the Attorney General in all legal matters. We count on usual cooperation. Now, this letter is coming up because uh, Mr. Bachman has sued, and uh, it appears that the name of the lawyer entered on the suit is, uh, is a private lawyer, and uh, they, they are looking. People are beginning to look. How is Parliament going to pay the lawyer? Because public procurement told Speaker Bagwin that we cannot approve for use to use private lawyers and use the taxpayers' money to pay. The Attorney General is the principal legal advisor to the government. The office of the Speaker is part of the government. The Attorney General ought to defend the office of the Speaker. That's why we all, as taxpayers, pay the Attorney General. Speaker Bagwin cannot hire his own lawyer. If he hires his own lawyer, he has to pay his own lawyer. I think that that's the commercial side. But in terms of the legal side, if he has his own lawyer, has he done something wrong? I think that's another, that's another part of the argument. But people are publishing this tonight because Speaker Bagbin, as it's turning out, is suing and they suspect that he's going to use a private lawyer. Let's go to happen. They created 137 members of the uh, minority or NDC, the two biggest, the dual poly, political dual police held by the MPP on the right and the NDC on the left. So the, uh, the Ghanaians voted to create 137 members of the MPP parliament and 137 members of the NDC parliament. And then another seat was won by an MPP independent candidate in the person of uh, the Honorable Isiama, who is now the second deputy speaker of parliament. Isiama agreed that he will sit with the MPP and there's been a lot of chaos in the parliament since then. As a result of this close mark, the M NDC that had accepted to be the minority group 
Uh, they didn't quite accept it, but that's what it had to happen. So, you know, Parliament started with NDC forcing themselves as the majority group, and that's what created the chaos that embarrassed the whole country that they were trying to create again today. You know, you can't do that as a politician. You can't. You can't go up in Parliament and do something that will deliberately embarrass the Republic because you know that this is wrong. So on the night of the sit, the NDC fought, 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 and said they were majority. Two days later, every Ghanaian knew who was majority. So we've forgotten about that. Recently, NDC came up and said the electoral roll, the voters' register, is forged. There has to be a forensic audit. They took the whole country on a demonstration. In the end, they went to electoral commission. They didn't have evidence to show what they had been saying. And that, again, is unpatriotic politics. You can't do politics like that. We're in election year. You have to campaign. You have to tell the people what you want to do. You don't just always want to create chaos.